We live in the most opportune, important, pivotal, revolutionary, and also the most dangerous time in all of human history. Because for the first time in human history, we now have the technology to free ourselves, enslave ourselves, save ourselves, or destroy ourselves. Technology has given us the power to create a super virus capable of decimating the entire world's population. Thanks to science, mass global extinction is now in the hands of anyone smart enough, dedicated enough, and resourceful enough to pull it off. Technology is not going backwards, and neither is time. In fact, everything is accelerating. Resources are raped from the environment and replaced with toxic pollution and waste at an exponentially increasing rate. We cannot continue on our current path, enslaved by debt, oil, and other metered energy sources. An economy built upon fake money, generated by the sale and exploitation of a finite resource. So what's the next step? I mean, where do we go from here? We only have two options, really. Go to space or go extinct. The main goal here is survival of the species, instead of the alternate option, which is imminent, greed-driven self-destruction of the entire human race, which is happening right now, every day, all around us. The main problem, the primary obstacle in the way of actually achieving this goal of a sustainable space-age civilization is energy, which can neither be created nor destroyed, yet exists in abundance and various forms all around us. The trick to exploiting energy for use and consumption is analyzing the way that energy transforms according to mathematically derivable and experimentally obtainable laws of physics. Sometimes it's riding electromagnetic waves at a given frequency. Sometimes it's harnessing the pressure created through a steam turbine. Sometimes it's electrochemical. But regardless of the science involved, the fact remains that breakthrough methods for harnessing and producing energy have been violently suppressed by the powers that be, solely for the purpose of controlling and manipulating other human beings. Nikola Tesla had the inventions over 100 years ago that could have saved us and freed us from our current situation of oil dependence. Of course, he had his funding cut and his project shut down by bankers. Cold fusion technology, the Pons and Fleischmann experiment, has had hundreds of successful replications in labs around the world, yet it is still rejected by the mainstream scientific community. The peer-reviewed journals refuse to publish papers on cold fusion, and the patent offices refuse intellectual property rights, which removes all incentives from private investors looking to fund cold fusion research. Thanks to the bankers, the money-hungry, profit-driven objectives of a super-wealthy international owning class, humanity has been tricked into chasing money instead of dreams. Our wings have been clipped, our visions misdirected, and our species deprived of its rightful place among the stars. Instead, technology is being used to enslave the human race rather than liberate it. It's a sick, twisted world we live in, and only we have the ability to change it. Unfortunately, the majority of people in this world have absolutely no clue what's even happening, let alone what to actually do about it. Even worse, there are some out there who have a few small pieces of the puzzle, yet think they are fully awake and aware because they know a little bit more than the average person. Some will even go a step further and claim the ultimate truth, like charlatans. I think these people are idiots who fail to grasp the most basic premise of knowledge, information, and truth, and how it builds upon itself. The devil is in the details, my friend. We live in the information and communications age, the age of the internet and cell phones, although some might prefer to call it the misinformation and miscommunications age. Thanks to these technologies, lies can now be spread faster and further than ever before. Without proper training in logic and skepticism, it's impossible to sort out fact from fiction. And since the internet is an open source platform where anyone can share their thoughts, opinions, and ideas, regardless of their validity, their logical basis, or their agenda, we are submerged in a sea of misinformation and flawed interpretation, and sometimes outright disinformation. Fortunately, there are bits of truth floating around in this ocean of lies and misinformation that makes up the Internet. Yet just imagine all the information and truth that's out there that is yet to be discovered and put on the Internet. No one is really sure what will come after the information age, although some futurists predict the nanotech age, while others seriously doubt we will ever get that far without killing ourselves first. The world's current banking and economic system is not sustainable and must be overthrown and replaced if we hope to avert imminent self-destruction of our species. But what should we replace it with? Some, like the Venus Project and the Zeitgeist Movement, have made valid suggestions for the restructuring of a global leadership and economic system. Others have rejected such futurist movements, accusing them of being part of the New World Order itself, though these people seldom have any better ideas of their own for the future. The fact remains that the current system is not sustainable and must be replaced with something else. Regardless of what label you try to slap on this idea, 
Right now, we are on a path of imminent self-destruction, which must be averted at all costs for the sake of this planet and the entire human race. We can no longer fear change. The survival of our species depends on it. What kind of future do you want? What kind of future can you realistically have? Sustainability is not a buzzword created by the world elites to trick us into enslavement. It is a very simple and precise definition, one that I doubt the international owning class would ever subscribe to, aside from the issue of population control. It means that we recycle 100% of all the waste we produce. It means that we curb our addiction to finite, non-sustainable energy sources. Actually doing this is easier said than done. No matter how hard we try, we can never go back, only forward. We can look back, try not to repeat the same mistakes we made before, but we will undoubtedly make new mistakes in the future. Again, this is the most important and pivotal time period in all of human history, one that will determine the fate or survival of our species. You can choose to sit back and enjoy the ride, or you can join the transition team and help create a better tomorrow for our children's children. You could be an armchair critic, a naysayer, or a finger pointer. Or you could actually get out there and start digging in and get your hands dirty with the rest of the experimentalists. This is only the beginning of a very intense ride, but that's only if you're prepared and willing to step on board. Like anything else in this world, information can be used or abused. While world elites try to maintain a stranglehold on the information markets, thanks to the internet, many of their deepest secrets are leaking out daily. Their efforts to control information go hand in hand with their efforts to control money, and once one collapses, they both will. As more people become aware of large-scale financial scams like the not-so-Federal Reserve Bank or the petrodollar recycling system, their ability to propagate these rackets will become increasingly complicated. Information works much differently than money. If two people exchange a one dollar bill, they both end up with one dollar bill. But if two people exchange an idea, they wind up with two ideas each. Ideology is the basis for psychological manipulation and mind control. Ideas are powerful, easily spread, and they move people into action. Which ideas will exit or enter your mind today? Are they good ideas? Will they work to achieve a worthy goal? Will they be interpreted correctly or possibly misconstrued? Of all the ideas I've ever had and shared publicly through my Alien Scientist YouTube channel, none could truly compare or come close to the idea of what a real alien scientist from an advanced spacefaring civilization would actually be like. This channel has been my own, very human attempt at conceptualizing the idea of an alien scientist. The idea of a super advanced civilization and how their science and technology might actually work. Also the idea that invisibility and non-intrusive contact protocols might explain the Fermi Paradox. The idea that we are not alone. And we need to start reconceptualizing the world around us and what we take for granted. Also need to think about our place in the universe. Where we fit in. Where we are today and where we are going tomorrow. But also taking this idea and sharing it with others so that we can maybe figure out how to use this technology to get us out of the mess we're in right now.